From Orlando, Florida, and APTA's next conference, I'm Jason Bellamy. I'm joined by Rupal Patel, and uh, we are in day whatever. It's Friday. We're, we're in day Friday here at the next conference, and tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, early slot, you have a session called what? Uh, social determinants of health and how we can use them in clinical practice. That may not be the exact session, but something like that. Something and like so, that. so if you are here, first of all, you can still catch that. And and if they do, what will they catch? Is really what we're going to talk about today. Social determinants of health. Um, you know, what what are we talking about when when we just use that phrase? So when we use that phrase, what we're really talking about is just uh, where people. Um, are born, where people live, where people grow, where people play, where they pray and work. And so those are the uh, things that we w need to consider. So it's important for us as physical therapists to think about um, people and where they live, um, their socioeconomic status, certainly their race and ethnicity, um, their employment status, violence, mm -hmm. you know, in the home, nutrition, um, safety in the community in terms of access to transportation, as well as um, things like access to public spaces for activity. So those are all what are encompassed into the social determinants of health. And so, so the idea there, you know, we think about things, often we talk about those in broadly speaking environmental factors, we think of them in terms of a cultural competence approach. How do I treat my patient based on where they're from and, and, and what their background is? But in this case, what we're talking about is where I live, work and play may affect my health itself. So yes. what are some examples of that? So a good example of that would be is if you have a patient who comes into you for, let's say, low back pain, and one of the things you as a physical therapist tell them to do is exercise, and you want them to perhaps do something a little bit more cardiovascular, take a walk in the neighborhood every evening for 30 minutes, but they may live in an area where there's not sidewalks. They may live in an area where there's a lot of high crime, so they don't feel safe actually going out. They may be from a lower socioeconomic uh, group where they don't have the money to go to a gym or to the local Y. Or they may have a job that where they're working 12-hour shifts and they are too tired to actually go to the gym. Yeah. So those are all factors we need to consider before we actually say, hey, well, for your home program for low back pain, I want you to walk 30 minutes, you know, five times a day because that's important. So if I'm a PT in a really small town, I'm guessing that those PTs may be more naturally attuned to those things. I know what my, my community is going through. If you're in a diverse city, I mean, I'm in the Washington DC area, there's a vast difference between potentially where my, my patients are coming from. What should a clinician be mindful of? I mean, how do you how do you um, how do you become mindful about this? Is I guess what I'm asking. So, what will you be encouraging people to do? Not just understand that this is a thing. What should they be doing to be a positive impact here? Yes. So, one of the things we'll talk about tomorrow during our session is how, as physical therapists, we need to be screening for these factors in all our patients and uh, uh, not just ones that we think have a problem because there's a lot of invisible problems in our society and so you don't want to uh, stereotype and have some sort of a you know uh, implicit bias well it's every person who walks in from this zip code mm -hmm. or this because things are transient in terms of life and so I think that's one of the biggest things the hardest part of this is we um, are not trained to do this and a lot of these uh, topics and areas are very sensitive and as physical therapy is we don't want to turn off people we want to build trust so I think a lot of it is the art mm -hmm. of physical therapy um, just as important as you know kind of the science of it and so asking questions and one of the things we're going to go through is some screening tools that are actually evidence-based that have been out there that we can use to be able to start screening for this um, but the one big thing is screening for social determinants is a lot different than screening for let's say fall prevention because you know that we can measure and then we have a number and then we know based on that number okay they fall in this category right. and they're at high risk so they need to go yeah, do that cuts this. across so there's everything a, there's right. an algorithm right. that we follow whereas when it comes to social determinants there's no algorithm right and so a lot of it is, is left up to uh, your judgment but it's more important to actually listen to the patient client and ask them hey so you know these are some things you're struggling with so what is it that I can help you with what and what are those resources sources I can link link you with in the community so those would be the things. so people who are here in Orlando have a chance to learn some of this stuff tomorrow mm -hmm. uh, but most people who see this or hear this will not uh, will, will not be here um, so is 
is the first step to understand what the screening tools are? Are there formal places they can get this training? What, what's the next step for somebody who wants to realize, aha, I have a weakness here. What, what should somebody do? I think first, uh, understanding and realizing what the social determinants of health are, looking at your patient population in your clinic, not the individual patients, but hey, in the last month, we've had X number of patient visits, and kind of thinking about some of their demographics and some of these characteristics, and where are they on that? And if you do have patients in your clinic that actually uh, look like that, that this could be an impact, then starting to ask those questions about those things, and but not just ask questions, because sometimes if you ask questions, then people may get the impression, hey, okay, then this person has a resource. And if you don't have that resource or linkage ready, then you're doing them a disservice. So there's actually a very good commentary that was written in JAMA by a physician, Dr. Garg, which I'm going to use in my presentation. He mentioned just that, that it would almost be unethical for us mm -hmm. to just ask the question about social determinants and not then if the patient says, yes, I need help with job placement or finding food for my family, then you don't have a resource to send them to. You know, that's what they say, say about lawyers, never ask a question you don't know the answer to, and yes. it's almost the same thing. Same you have thing. to have a solution to follow yeah. up with. Yeah. Um, so let's get bigger picture for a second. We've been talking about this in, in terms of how to improve the patient care experience, mm -hmm. but APTA has this vision of transforming society by improving the human, you know. Uh, Optimizing human. Good grief. To, to improve, improve the, the human, human experience. experience. Thank you. I needed help today. It's Friday. Um, and so from a bigger picture, what can physical therapists, physical therapist assistants, students, what can we do to actually shape those social factors themselves? Right. So I'm a firm believer in the socio-ecological model, which is that as physical therapists, we certainly work with patients at the individual level and the interpersonal level, but we need to go then go beyond at the community level, again, where people work, play, pray, all those. And then the biggest level is really the policy level, right? So um, in terms of our communities, you know, get out of our clinical walls and go do physical therapy where people are. And so whether that is at your local park, whether that that is, you know, at the church. Uh, as part of my dissertation, I did a, a study in the Hindu temple mm -hmm. um, near where I live, and we did a diabetes prevention program, 12-week lifestyle modification, and it was, I did it at the community because people weren't going to come to my university or to another clinic for that because they weren't unhealthy. They were pre-diabetic and they needed help with lifestyle modification, and they had cultural barriers and uh, transportation and stress and family barriers, and it would have been and they came because I held it at the Mandir, the temple, and before services. So making it that's, you know, easy for them so that they can uh, come do that. Getting out of the bubble and uh, yeah. of, of PT and thinking about society was also a theme of the House of Delegates. You're a delegate. It's been a long week for you. Clearly, you're coping better than I'm coping. Um, but what was it like, let's, let's talk about that, coming out of, the, uh, out of the House of Delegates, the actions that were taken this week, Sharon Dunn's remarks about looking forward to the centennial and who we can be. How are you feeling after all this week in terms of where this profession and association are going? I would say I'm feeling very energized, as I always do after I leave house and you know uh, this conference, and uh, optimistic, hopeful. You know, I think those are uh, the the great feelings I le uh, leave with, and hopefully I'll carry with me when I go back home and with my faculty and my students and my colleagues. It's like you know. I am APTA, we are APTA, and this is what it's all about. Awesome. So uh, that's the end of my broadcast here from Next, but uh, the students are going to be doing some, so you can toggle over to the Student Assembly Facebook page and check those out. They're coming right up. For Rupert Patel, I'm Jason Bellamy, and I'll catch you later.